Welcome to Zion Christian Ministries Facebook Live. Today's message is on continuing on the fruit of the Spirit. The title of this message is Peace. Do we trust the Lord? As we go into this, let me pray that we might hear what Jesus is saying through the Scripture and who we are in His peace. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the peace of the Lord that comes by the fruit of the Spirit. We thank you, Lord, because of that peace that we have. We can walk in something that the world so desperately needs right now. A peace, a glory, and a goodness that is available to all who believe in the Lord. So I ask the Lord as this message goes out, those here and those at home will receive the understanding of the peace that we're to have and to walk in. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace. In the Greek, it means this. A state of rest, quietness, calmness, and an absence of strife and tranquility. To know the perfect well-being includes a harmonious relationship between God and men, men to men, nations, and even families. Peace is something that we are going to talk about today to bring into your life a revelation of what Christ has done for you and how we're to walk in. In Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, Paul writes, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace by which we stand and rejoice in the hope and the glory of God. Peace with God. When you look this up in the context of what Paul was writing about, he speaks his peace this way. It's a state of reconciliation with God. And with all that is blissful sense of composure and harmony, which flows from such a condition. Peace is a special legacy bequeathed by Christ to his disciples. So when Paul writes this, it's our faith in trouble times that we should have a peace that comes through Christ. I don't know if you know it or not, but there's some turmoil going on in the world. <laughs> there's everything from economic to sickness to social injustice to nations wanting to war with each other to everything possible that is going on in the world. But Paul says there's a state of reconciliation that we must focus on, and it's with God. Our first place of peace is what Christ has done for us. And by our faith in him, we gain that peace. And so in John 14, this is what Jesus says, verses 26 and 27. But the helper of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. And bring to remembrance all things I say to you. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Now as the world gives, do I give to you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It's not our peace. It's his peace. It's what he wants to give to us by the working of the Holy Spirit, so that we walk in something that is different than what the world has. As he says, don't be troubled by everything that's going on around you. Amen. Years ago, the Lord gave me that there's no crisis in heaven. There's nothing happening outside that he doesn't understand what's coming on. He is sovereign. And so in that, he's not in crisis. Neither should we. Should we use wisdom in the midst of the world in crisis? Yes. Should we walk in that wisdom amongst other men? Yes. But we're out in crisis. When we find a peace, people will know it. They'll want it. They'll desire it. What flashed through my mind, September 27th, 
and a casket. I had great peace, even though it was the greatest pain I've ever had. And we did not have, quote, an altar call at a funeral. But as I had shared at my son's graduation, I shared my heart and my trust in Christ. And the pastor brought the message. It was over. And everyone came to the casket. To me. And I never looked at it until a few minutes ago as the Holy Spirit brought back to me. It was a peace on me. Was I heartbroken? Yes was a lack of joy at the moment, yes. But I had great peace because I knew that I would see him again. I knew this peace and I had shared it in the service. And I remember a guy that we had done daycare with for years and all the way up until his boy was in seventh grade, he came up and he said, to me, as a non-believer, I want what you have. Well, I had salvation, but I had a piece of understanding that my relationship with God would bring me back to the Son who went ahead of me. That's a piece that the world needs right now. Amen. They don't have that piece. They have turmoil, whether it is. We have been very fortunate in the North State to bypass a lot of things that are going on everywhere else. We live in a time of sickness and disease. I believe that we're to pray as Christians to stand under the blessing and the blood of Christ for our protection. But also we're not to tempt God and not use wisdom. And so this peace, Jesus says, I leave to you. It's my peace. He had nothing but tranquility, rest, and calmness, and there's no strife in him. That's Chuck Christ. He walked the earth without sin, with no anxiousness, no turmoil. How many times in Scripture do you see Christ? They're ready to cast him off a, a cliff. They're ready to stone him. They're ready to do something. <laughs> and it says in scripture, he just walked through the crowd. What was he walking in? He had a perfect relationship, understanding of who the Father was, how the Father felt about him, and when he walked on earth was in peace. So when he says to us in John 14, it's my peace, I want to leave to you. What do you want? Do you want his peace? Or as I shared this morning, or you want the 60s and 70s piece. Peace. Peace. Peace, man. Oh, well, cool. It didn't quite work out well. So what was the world trying for in the 60s and 70s? Peace. There was war. There was turmoil. The very thing we're going through right now, the nation didn't get it then. And it's our job to bring peace to a nation that doesn't get it now. They didn't understand. They wanted something, but they were looking for a way of finding it in the world's way, not in Christ's way. So Jesus says again in John 16, 33, These things I speak spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Where we have it? In him. In the world, they'll have tribulation. Is there tribulation? Yeah. yeah. Now he says, but. Now remember, only God can go, but. By the way, <laughs> even though this is going on, even though you might be a wicked sinner, they'll say, but my grace is available to you. So in all this tribulation, he says, but be of good cheer. Not everyone in the church is on social media, praise God. But unfortunately, many of them are not in good cheer right now on social media. 
Hopefully they don't read 1 Corinthians chapter 10 of what happened to Israel when they were complaining all the time. We must be a good cheer. Why? Not because of something we have done. I have overcome the world. So, these things I spoke to you that in me you may have peace. So, to be in him, and he overcame the world, and the tribulation of the world should not take your peace. It shouldn't draw you away. So when that word I shared with you before we went live, and what the Lord told me, get up in the morning and get the news of heaven. Amen. There's no crisis in heaven. God has a plan. He has an answer for everything. He has the word of God for us to lean upon. <laughs> Excuse me. Then you can find out what the world's going through and then you might bring it peace. It's kind of a good work. I can't claim it. I can't copyright it because it came from heaven. Because he says, what? My mercy is new every morning. My love is available all the time. We have so much information that comes at us night and day. Through many forms and many ways. When I grew up, you only had three stations. ABC, CBS, and NBC. And it was black and white. Never forget when Dad brought home that color TV. And the peacock came up. Whoa. Now some of you won't remember that because you weren't born yet. It was so much easier. So much more and less information. But the enemy is good at bringing everything at us so we don't focus upon what we have and we lose it because we're looking somewhere else. We're not to play Marco Polo with God. He doesn't hide. He's right there where we can find him. So in this tribulation of the world, I have peace for you, he says. And then another thing he does in bringing peace, and I'll give you two examples today, is in the healing, he brings peace. Mark chapter 5, verse 34, is the story of a woman who had issues of blood for 12 years. She spent all her money on everything. She couldn't get healed. And then Jesus is on his way to go raise somebody up who was sick. And the crowd pressed around, and she grabbed the hem of his garment. And the scripture says he felt the virtue, the power lead him, and he wanted to know who touched him. And his disciples all said, how can you say that, Lord? Everybody's pressing against you. But he knew somebody was grabbing him in faith, wanting what he had. And the woman is healed, and this is what he said. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed in your affliction. In Greek, it should say, go into peace. So what Jesus is saying to this woman who is healed, go into my peace. I've taken the affliction from you. i removed it from you. Now go into what is available because of what you have believed in. You hear that? When she believed into that healing, she entered into the peace that God has brought through the blood of the Jesus that speaks of that our sins will be washed away, and he is our healer. So she goes into the peace. Go into the peace, being healed of your affliction. In Luke 7, verses 44 and 50, Jesus is having dinner, and so when I preach the afternoon service, it's not good to talk about food. <laughs> Because I'm hungry. <laughs> I can't wait for the big meal in heaven. Come on. Somebody else might, might want, want a meal or two right now, too. And he's sitting there, and this woman comes in. She's not quite of the best character, the Pharisee said. 
and wanted to know if Jesus knew who she was. And this is what he says when they said who the woman was, Jesus said to rightly judge, and he turned to Simon and he said, Do you see this woman? I enter in the house and you give me no water for my feet. But she was washed, she washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with a fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, your sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she has loved much. But to whom the little forgiveness the same loves. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? He said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go into peace. Church, we all were short. We all have sinned. We all should have been at that table. And so in her brokenness, recognizing how much she had done wrong, how much she didn't deserve something, she brings everything in brokenness to Christ. And by the faith that saves you, he said, now go into peace. What peace? A state of rest, quietness, calmness, absence of strife, of tranquility, a perfect well-being. It's harmonious to be between me and God. That's what he was saying to her. Go, come on in. It's taken their care of. Don't listen to the world. Don't listen to them reminding you of everything what you did. Church, don't listen to that devil who wants to remind you of your past. God has told us into his peace. Into a world that is in turmoil without this peace. When you listen to doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists in the big cities where some of this sickness has just overwhelmed them, one of the biggest things they said they're not trained for is to hold the hand of all these people dying. They said the family's not there. We've got to step in. We've got to use video chat. We have to have a phone. What are they saying? They can't bring peace to a situation that they're not trained for. I haven't expressed this to my lovely wife, but what I would love to do <laughs> is if you even put two sets of gloves on, put two gowns on, a mask, whatever you're supposed to do, and go into those places. Yeah, One, to bring healing, I believe, by Christ, but to bring the peace of God to people who may be passing into the other side without peace. So when you listen to the doctors and those who have to work in it, they may have a lot, they got a lot more brain than I got. They graduated a lot higher than I graduated. But there's one thing I graduated in to, peace. I graduated into what heaven is meant through Christ for me to have. And so when I listen, <laughs> I purposely watch certain shows that talk about those who die. I purposely want to stay connected, not to live in denial. I pray that our little hospital here will not get overwhelmed, or in Reading, or in Chico. I pray that we would have faith here and, and do what we're told to do. But I don't want us to learn the hard way. Because we just don't want to believe that we'll come here. We all die. The day to be born, the day to die. But wisdom tells me I want to live out the days that God called me to. And every one of you. And so, Jesus teaches the, the uh, Pharisees this interesting statement in a, 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 verses above this in 41. 42 and 7. There are certain debtors who had two debts, one owed 500 denarii, the other 50. 
And when they had nothing which to repay, he freely gave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of you them for loving more? And they answered, so I suppose, the one who forgave more. Man, can you imagine the revival of people recognize how much they've been forgiven? Not at the moment of salvation only. But in a continual understanding that I've been forgiven more. Can you imagine a worship service of people who have been forgiven more? There was a prison in Argentina called Omos. And in that prison, they had about 300 or so people come together and worship. And when I was visiting Argentina, one day they gave you a list of places you could go. I went one place and my roommate went to that prison. And he said he never felt the presence of God like that. That all these men standing shoulder to shoulder, hardly could move for two hours worshiping God. He said it was so overwhelming because there was such an outpouring of the Spirit of God there is because they knew they'd been forgiven much. Sometimes we forget how much we've been forgiven or what we're going to be forgiven for tomorrow if we have the wrong attitude. So in this attitude of knowing how much you're forgiven, then you can begin to really rejoice in the peace you have with God and enter into it every day with a joy which that love has been poured out as we talked about the fruit of love, the fruit of joy, now the fruit of peace. Think how they connect. See, Jesus brings peace. And if we got Christ, what are we going to bring to the world? In Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 38. This is what was written. This is Peter had been called to the Gentiles to Cornelius' house and he was supposed to minister to the dogs but he had a vision and God and showed him again about food coming down and three times on a sheep you know and uh, I know there were some pigs on that sheep and Jesus the Lord said chill and eat Peter said I don't eat those things that what I bless is blessed and clean so by going to the Gentiles, that's what Peter wrote. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. But every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness, is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. And the word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, and began in Galilee after baptism which Jesus preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with power, went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. What was with him? The power of God to bring peace to those who are walking in darkness. Who are we? What's our call? For the little home, you missed a very good mini-sermon by Brandon who brought forth before the offering calling people to repent. I joked myself, well, if you're not going to get much of an offering when you tell everybody they're in sin, but <laughs> it's okay because it was a word from the Lord. Because we're called to something, church. In Romans 8, 5 and 6, it says this. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For where the carnal in mind is death, but to be spiritual mind is life and peace. You do know that the scripture teaches that that what's going on in the natural is happening in the supernatural. It'd be really good that we make a movie about what's going on in the heavens right now with everything going on in the world. I bet there's war up there. I bet the enemy knows something's coming, and he don't know when it's coming, but he knows that the Father must be getting ready. Now I wonder if he's hearing the trumpet of a horse that somebody's going to ride down. 
we have an opportunity to get prepared for something in the Sikkim, who will bring war upon the earth and bring peace once and for all. But until that day, what are we going to live in? So, we live in the flesh, we're in turmoil, we're in tribulation, we're in fear, we have all these things working around us, and the world sees a church consumed that we can't meet the way we want to meet, sing the way we want to sing. We're going to fight that thing. And I shared this morning that we need to pray for the poor state of Florida as we're getting hit with a hurricane now. And believe it or not, the governor called a state of emergency for people to stay home. And people have been protesting because of state of emergency that was declared to wear a mask. But I think I'll go home and turn on the weather channel and see if the people are on the streets protesting this protection of a hurricane. Are you getting it yet? The Lord wants us to pick our battle. Yeah. No. I've never lived in Florida. I'm sure that there's many storms that come through Florida, and I'm sure that I've never seen protests for a hurricane to be protected, people to be protected and stay in their homes. They don't protect, uh oh, -uh, it's coming. They're hammering up the doors and they're putting plywood up and they stay home because it's a governmental order to keep you safe. Have you ever figured out what kind of war is being released over us? that I'm fighting with this. Because I want people safe. Yeah, he's good at stirring up war when there shouldn't be war. Yeah. He's good at saying, look over here. Because I'm over here messing with everything over here. peace on the church of Jesus Christ right now. I love my brothers. In our country, because of things that men tend out, we I have a right to believe what I believe, and I want every one of you to do that. Believe what you want to believe. But the book that's written by God is up for debate. I'm thankful that I can preach today in a land where it's allowed. Right now, if you're at home, if you're listening, it's because I have a freedom to do that. I'm not being contained in preaching the Word of God. I'm not going to be contained if I get a prophetic word to release it. And even if I have to put my mask on and speak through a, through a microphone, it's not going to stop the power of God coming out. As we worship today in the house of God, the presence of God came, and I didn't see any moving lips, but I heard hearts that were worshiping God in spirit and truth. And then the Holy Spirit came. Jesus was not hindered by this, but he's hindered by lips that don't want to speak the truth. They're giving false worship. We're called to something greater in this season. We're fighting the wrong fight, in my opinion. Now I know that because this will go over Facebook, I'm sure I may get comments from my brothers who will disagree with me, and that's okay. Because in the end, we all stand before God. But I want to take a war against the enemy that's bringing fear and anxiousness and death. Hunger, perversion, children being grabbed to fight the fight against sin. Because I got the peace of God because I've been forgiven. See, before we had this peace, we were this in Romans 8, 
7 and 8. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Before I was saved, even though I didn't know it, because I wasn't raised in church, I remember I was taken to church, a couple of Easter's maybe, never understood why I had to get dressed up. I was at war with God because of my sin. Didn't know that. Didn't even really know I was at war with God when I got saved, when he came and spoke to me about salvation. Until I read the word, uh-oh, I was fighting this guy who came to save me all this time. So we were all enemies. So we had no peace. No peace what? With God. We had no state of reconciliation with God. We had no composure and harmony which flows from the condition of peace from God. Our peace, we thought, was in what we did as we pleased. In what we either we smoked, we drank, or what we did contrary to the word of God. But yet there was no peace there. What leads to addiction? No peace. You try to fill a void that can only be filled by the blood of Jesus and the peace that comes from God who comes in and resides in the inner man. So he's the God of peace. In 1 Corinthians 14.33, he says this. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. I do believe there's a lot of confusion out there right now. I do believe that I shared with someone, I'm not going to share what specifically I've said, because it will go over the internet, and some of them might believe it. But someone was, came to me with every conspiracy theory possible that I was totally deceived that there really isn't a pandemic, that nobody's really dying, it's all fake. Okay. So I told the person nicely, let me write something on Facebook about the election that is totally a lie and watch everybody believe it. The problem with that is I could never get it back. Even if I post, gotcha, I was lying. Because see, years ago, about gossip and conspiracies and lies, is if I would stand on a second story window with a big feather pillow, and there'd be a 30 mile an hour north wind blowing, and I'd cut that pillow open, and the feathers would blow out everywhere. And then it would be my job, because it's gossip or slander, to go get every feather back and try to put it back in the pillow. Can't do it. You understand the enemy knows that? You understand the enemy you get you to say something that ain't true? And it travels fast, like a wind blowing from the north. And then you try to put it back in the box. It don't work. See, so God is not a God of confusion. But a peace. Church, quit grabbing confusion. It's out there. Grab the word of God. Stay within the boundaries where you know there's peace. Because he says this to the church. I say this to you today. In 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Now may the Lord of peace himself. Give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. Hear it? So, he's writing to the church of Thessalonica, and if you go in earlier passages, in the first letter, he's talking about turmoil, tribulation, all these things coming against the church. 
So the second letter at the end, he says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. So what's he saying to the church of Thessalonica? I know you're going through this stuff. I know you're being persecuted. I know the devil's against you. But I pray that you might understand that the Lord of peace, Christ Jesus, will give you peace always in every way. And then, Lord be with you all. If Lord be with you all, then the Spirit of Christ, which is peace, can be with you. We must understand the Word of God in this season. We must understand that there's a world that doesn't have this comfort. It doesn't have the opportunity to come in and worship God and feel the presence of God, listen to the words of a song proclaiming that the power of God is there for us. And we feel the presence of heaven and the peace that comes with it. But in a few minutes, you're going to be out there. And you can go out into another atmosphere where there's confusion and turmoil and tribulation and fear. I call the church to rise up in the gift of peace. I call the church of Jesus Christ that we have something they don't have. And it's because of my salvation and you at home. And if you don't have this peace, today you can receive that salvation. You can receive that peace. You can have that quietness of soul. I led someone to the Lord this week. And it was the most amazing time as they just laid out their life. And when we were done praying, well, she was done praying, I laughed. But she goes, whoa, so much peace, deep, 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 deep in me. She couldn't manufacture that. She couldn't be enough with that. She left with Christ in his peace, came and took care of the turmoil, the tribulation, her sins, her failures, and everything, and walked out as a new creation. Old things were passing away and everything was becoming new in her life. And she said nothing but joy. And she had that famous word that we all can spell either way, forward, backward. Wow. <laughs> she kept saying, wow. Wow. And I'm laughing. Spell that for me. Oh, backwards. Spell backwards. <laughs> that was wow. Over and over again. Peace. So I'm going to read that definition to you again. And we're going to play a song. And I want you to listen to the words of this song. I want you to listen to what is being sung to you. And the words of this song to minister to you. And at the end, I will pray. And if you want prayer, I'd be happy to pray for you. So, in the Greek, there's this peace. It's called a state of rest. It's a quietness, a calmness, an absence of strife, tranquility to know to perfect well-being. Includes harmonious relationship between God and man, men to men, nation to nation, family to family. Peace. Holy Spirit, may we lay down the burdens of the day, the burdens of the season, the burdens that Hold us back to the peace that we must learn to trust you in. Holy Spirit, fill every soul with that peace that comes from Christ. He's given it to us, he says. His word is true. And we know it doesn't come back void. And so the Lord's reaching because we're here and those at home. I pray that in the season we live, that the fruit of the Spirit, His peace, would fill you, comfort you, 
in everything that you would need because you've been reconciled with God. It's a legacy given to us by Christ. And those at home, whoever is listening that does not have Jesus as their Savior, today would be a good day to find the peace of God. The tranquility, the rest, the absence of strife, that you might have that feeling of perfect well-being because you're in right relationship with the Father. I ask these things in Christ's name. And I say amen. Amen. See you, see you all Tuesday.